so we're talking about prayer, but we want to do a whole lot more than talk about prayer because, you know what, we've talked about prayer for a very long time. What we're not doing is praying. So how about we get around to that part of it? And that's what we're going to focus on through our worship hours today. And now we have sung a powerful song that is a prayer. I hope you noticed that part of it. Some of these songs, don't, I'm not singing that prayer because I don't, it's that song because I don't know it or I don't like it. Man, when you turn down, I'm not going to pray, that's a pretty dark moment in the spiritual world, right? When you don't think about the words because it's a beautiful song, you think, what a pretty song and how that flows, but you're, you're not focusing on, this is talking to God, we're going to miss out on a lot of what God has to say to us. So, Today, we're going to sing about prayer, we're going to talk about prayer, and we're going to do a significant amount of praying. Here's what I'd like for you to do right now. I mean, again, you just came in, lots of things on your mind, things on your heart. So just, this is the time, we're going to have some music playing, calm your heart, focus your spirit on the Lord, like we said. This is a time for you to, to spend time in prayer. We're going to give you some space to just get your own heart focused on the Lord. Here's a, here's a verse for you to, to consider. A lot of times for me in my prayer times, if I have a, a verse to help focus things for me, it helps out. This is one of my great uh, favorite prayer verses. The uh, psalmist said, I have set the Lord always before me. Whatever you're focused on, if you're focused on your problems, you're focused on your struggles, you're focused on what you're having for lunch, you set that before you, that's what you're going to be focused on. If you set the Lord before you, then that's what you're focused on. And so the psalmist said, I have set the Lord always before me. He's at my right hand. That means he is my strength. He's my guide. He's, he's the power for my life. And I shall not be shaken. You start looking for solutions to what's going on in life. Be sure you're looking in the right direction to find them. So we're going to spend time in silent prayer. Just our hearts before the Lord. There'll be some music playing. But spend this time. Now here's what happens. I'm going to ask you to pray for two minutes. All through the day today, I'm going to say, we're going to pray about that for three minutes. We're going to get up to four minutes. Now, here's what happens. When you start praying, you say, well, I ran out of words after about 15 seconds. Well, that's okay. But that doesn't mean you're done praying. Because here's the other part about prayer. When we start praying, we, we do it like this. We say, you know, God, this, 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 this. Amen. We drop the mic and we walk away. Like, How many conversations do you have with someone you love that would work great if that's how we did it? Not many conversations. So when you run out of words, that's a great time to pull up and say, okay, God, what do you have to say to me? And if you'll ask that question, the next thing that comes into your head may be really significant from God. And then pray about that. But continue in a spirit of prayer for the full two minutes. Then we'll come back together. We'll take the next, uh, next step in our prayer journey today. Okay? So let's spend this time. God, prepare my heart for what you have for me. Let my heart be open. Uh, let me hear what you have to say. Let my face be turned toward you. Spend this time in prayer. Our Father, thank you that you're with us today. And may our hearts be tuned to you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Today, we are going to talk just a bit about prayer. Now, that's what we mostly do with prayer, right, as we talk about it. But we don't often get around to actually praying. For most Christians, we talk about it. We study prayer. We lament our failures in it. We question the value of it. We neglect its power. But the one thing we don't do well, faithfully or often, is actually pray. So we're going to try to remedy that in big church today. One of the things we're working on as a church at multiple levels, because it's a culture-wide thing, especially in our country, is a bias toward knowledge-based Christianity. So we have this inclination that it's all about knowing stuff. And if you know about prayer, you're done. But that's different than actually praying. And, and so we, we want to get knowing what you should do, and obedience, doing what you should do. So they're running on an even keel. Because often, we're going to go to another conference, we're going to read another book, we're going to listen to another podcast, we're, we're, we're going to hear another sermon, or another Sunday school lesson about something like prayer. But the one thing we don't really do is pray. So we want to try to overcome some of that and get the 
knowing and the doing all lined up. Now, we have been learning about prayer as a church in some pretty dramatic ways over the last year and a half or so. And, and here's, here's why we've been learning, because we've been doing a lot of praying out in our city. And you don't learn much about prayer, you don't grow much in prayer until you pray. It's like, I didn't learn much about tennis, watching videos and reading about it. I learned about tennis by playing tennis. Well, same thing with prayer. You have to jump in and you start praying. So we have been doing this outreach into the city. And some of you are aware of this. We have, we have knocked on over 10, in the last year and a half, over 10,000 doors in our city. We have engaged somewhere 7,000 or better people in prayer at their door. And then we lead toward the gospel where a good many of those we're going to share Jesus and how they can know Christ. But, we, but we're caring for the city through prayer. You know what? You know, my, my burden for my city, my love for my city has grown because I'm praying for my city. One family at a time. And so we're, we're, we're learning about prayer because we're praying. And this foundation for everything we're doing is caring about people. And one of the things prayer does is it makes you care about people. You care about their needs, and you also start caring about the eternal soul when you start praying for them. So that's, that's the outflow of this effort we've been a part of. Now, in my experiences, there's an interesting pattern that's emerged. And yesterday, uh, we, we did one of our training days, and we went out. And so there were three of us in, in our little group, and it, it bore out what uh, I'd already written down to talk about at this point in the sermon just like it does just about every time we go out. Because when we go out, sometimes it's people who are really far from God. Sometimes it's people who, oh, I'm a believer and I love Jesus and all those things. But we say, you know, uh, yesterday, uh, T.J. Davidson and uh, my friend Brian's a pastor uh, at uh, another church here in town. He came for our training yesterday, so it's the three of us. So I say, hey, they knock on the door, answer the door. I'm Chad, this is T.J., this is Brian. We're out caring for the community, and uh, is there anything we could pray for you, for your family? And they look at you like, what in the world kind of crazy cult are you from? Not selling anything, nothing in my hands. Can we pray for you? And these are, this is the answer we get overwhelmingly, in my experience, and a lot of everybody that goes out, they've had the same experience. Can we pray for you? Believer or somebody really far from God? They say... No, everything's, everything's good right now. Yeah, a lot of you have been out are all going, yeah, mm-hmm, yep, everything's good right now. Now, just as, just as a baseline, is everything really good right now ever? See, we, we've kind of, we've downsized God, we, we, we've fun-sized God to, to a level where he's not, he's not involved in everything. He's not permeating every area of life. And there, he is so much bigger than we give him credit for. And uh, there's never a time when we don't need anything and everything's all good right now. And so we, we have to, you know, again, your view, your view of God may be a little bit stunted if that's the case. So we all need prayer. We need to pray for one another. And so today, that's what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to pray. And, and here you go. To step outside of what is comfortable. Uh, you know, now, I want you to be comfortable here at church. Today, I want you to be uncomfortable here at church. It's a safe place to be uncomfortable. Uh, you're with people who are already leaning into a relationship to the Lord today, so that makes it a pretty safe place to be. And so, um, step outside of what's comfortable. We're going to try some things that uh, I think will end up being a blessing to us. I want to show you a picture. Okay. So most of you are going to recognize, well, that's the Dome of the Rock. That means that's the Temple Mount it's sitting on. That means that's Jerusalem. Now, if I am looking at Jerusalem, where am I? Also in Jerusalem. I'm on the Mount of Olives. Now, uh, I took this picture at the end of a time sitting on the Mount of Olives in June. So there are 54 people in our tour group, 27 of them from our church, and we had the opportunity, not on our agenda, but we were able to work, work it out uh, to go into the Garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane Hermitage. And so if you're a tourist, there's a church, the Church of Gethsemane, 
and it's a big, big cathedral of a thing. And just outside of it, there's a, there's a gated off, uh, walled off garden. That this, there's the Garden of Gethsemane. It has a bunch of old olive trees in it. It doesn't date back to Jesus' time, but there's the Garden of Gethsemane. You can't go in and all. But up above it is the Garden of Gethsemane Hermitage. And there's seven Catholic priests who live there. And they minister from there and in the church down below. And Brother Diego is a pretty young guy, but he, he takes care of the place. And our tour guide, through a friend, developed a relationship with Brother Diego, a, a Dominican monk. And he was able to say, could, could we get in? And we got in. He, he waved off two other groups that said, this isn't open to the public. While we were there. So that's great. A big iron gate. We got there at the appointed time. Brother Diego lets us in. We all walk in and he locked the gate behind us. Because he has some really strict rules about the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, This isn't a tourist place. This is not your tour guide. Not going to be doing any tourist stuff in here. Uh, this, is a, this is a holy place. I know that you guys paid a lot of money to come. All the way to Israel to see as much stuff as you can see while you were here. However, I want you to be, be in relative silence in this place. And you have to stay for an hour. And he locked the gate behind us. We're not getting out. Because what did Jesus say? Jesus said to his disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane. Could you not remain and pray with me for an hour? You couldn't pray for even an hour. He said, I want you to spend this time in prayer. Just seeking the Lord. So we spread out. It's pretty, it's going, uh, the Mount of Olives is a pretty steep place. Garden of Gethsemane up there. So we, we spread out. And I sat down on a rock. And that's what was across from me on my rock. I was sitting under a couple of olive trees. Looking at that. So environment for prayer sometimes is really nice. And I began to pray. And you know I saw all kinds of things. Fascinating things. Interesting things. Things I did not know. Things that reaffirmed what, uh, what I believed. All those things when we were in Israel. But that hour in the Garden of Gethsemane. Was the most precious time that I spent in Israel. During that whole tour. And it was one of those times, there's certain markers in my life, and this is one of those markers where on that rock, looking across the Kidron Valley to the old city of Jerusalem, sitting in the Garden of Gethsemane, I again handed God a blank check from my life and signed it and said, God, whenever, wherever, whatever, you're going to have all of me there is to have. Amen. And that was one of the fastest hours of praying I've ever been a part of. Prayer is powerful. And today I'm going to ask you to do some things in prayer. And uh, you are sitting in rows. And I'm going to ask you to get out of your rows. I'm going to ask you to stand up at times. To move around in the building. Uh, to uh, reorganize ourselves here. Uh, we we'll invite you to share. To pray for one another. To pray silently. And I just want to tell you, you know, lean into this. I know it's different. Take some of you out of your comfort zone. You're used to, used to everything that happens often in church. And this is to our, to our deficit. Everything that happens being a, it's going to happen somewhere from the edge of this stage... And we're going to throw you a product. Well, worship is us looking toward the Lord. So we're just, we're going to kind of download that into the whole building today in a really tangible way. So that worship becomes me and God, we and God. And uh, I think good things will happen. Now, uh, I'll tell you this. Don't make this weird. Some of you are capable of making things weird. Don't make it weird. Don't, don't hold hands. Don't, don't dance and wave your hands above your head. Don't, don't make it weird for the people around you, okay? I think we all know what weird is. You can close your eyes to pray. The Bible does not tell you you ever have to close your eyes in prayer. 
I often do just for the distraction's sake because I'm easily distracted, but you don't have to close your eyes. But we want you to participate with others. Not You, know, you can just sit, just me, right here, all self-contained in my, in my uh, cone of solitude. Instead, engage with the people around you in a very simple way. Now, in this praying, this is not a time to catch up on all the praying you have not done since January. I'm going to give you some prayer prompts. Some think, pray about these things at different stages of the process of working through John 17. And I want you to pray about those things. And pray about those things together. And again, if we're praying for four minutes, you're going to pray. And then, you know, two or three, not everybody, you don't have to pray out loud. But you also don't have to pray a speech out loud. It can't just be a word or a sentence. So after a couple of people maybe pray out loud, continue praying about what what we've encouraged you to pray about, but then maybe you just share a sentence. Somebody that's already prayed comes back in another, another sentence or just a, just a phrase or a few words that you'll come back and pray to the Lord. In John 17, we have the record of what is really the Lord's Prayer. Now, the, the Matthew 6, our Father who art in heaven... That's the model prayer. Jesus said, that, and we know that it came in response to the disciples' question, Lord, teach us to pray. John, John taught his disciples to pray, teach us to pray. It gives you some things that you ought to incorporate into your personal prayer life. But John 17 is Jesus actually himself praying, and John records it for us in his gospel. John 17. And I encourage you to open your Bible there because it may be helpful to you in our prayer time. So in this prayer, we are on holy ground. This is the Lord's prayer for his disciples. And what does he pray for those that he loves, for those that he has invested so deeply in? And how does he pray for them? Now, this, this prayer is divided into three parts. So we're going to make our way through the three parts of the prayer. We're going to take, take on the whole chapter of John 17. And the first part is Jesus praying to his Father in heaven for himself. Okay? Now, in order to begin our prayer time, I want to read John 17, 1 through 5. Here's what it says. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven. Again, where you, where you focus in prayer, uh, has a, and not just, not just and sometimes physically helps me to focus how I posture myself in prayer, but overwhelmingly, uh, it's how I focus my heart, my Father in heaven. He says, when Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that the son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life that they know that you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent, I have glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. All right, here's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to spend time again first in silent prayer. And how about this? That we would seek and know and see, experience the glory of God. And the glory of God is, the glo- glory mean, being revealed means what is hidden, what is buried, what is forgotten, what is neglected would be revealed. And there's a lot about God and how we see Him as, again, fun size, downsized, uh, expendable, pick it up, lay it down. That's different than how God's revealed in the Bible. Is a God of glory. The, the glorious God who created the heavens and the earth. And so this is a time to spend some time in personal prayer. That His glory, all that great stuff, when you belong to Him, His glory would just overflow out of you. That other people would, would, would see that glory, not as you, but as Him. That... That, that we would respond to Him because He is glorious with, with a faith, a commitment, a surrender, that we would see what is ours, our inheritance, our identity, 
the blessing that is ours to belong to Jesus Christ, that all those things would come to bear for us, that we'd see God as He really is, not, not small and weak and far, far away, but close and powerful, Lord of heaven and earth, and that that glory that is His would come to reside on us in such a way that we reflect that glory. Let's spend this time in silent prayer. I'm going to give you about three minutes. Spend your time. God, let me reflect your glory. Let me see your glory. Show me how big you really are. Amen. Amen. Okay, three minutes takes a while, doesn't it? And as you pray for three minutes, especially about big kingdom of God things that usually is not a part of a lot of our ongoing praying, you run out of material, and that's the time when you start, okay, God, what am I missing here, and what do I need to focus on? You know, one of the things for me, anytime I start looking at God and His glory, how marvelous, amazing He is, the first thing I start seeing is my own sin, and uh, spend some time in confession when I get to those times. And so that's, that's a part of this process of, of learning and, and listening to what God has to say to you, seeking. God, show me. I got, I got through my part of this praying, but... Now I need to hear what you have to say, so I'll know what to say next. And he prompts us in our prayer. Second part, beginning of verse 6, Jesus prays for his disciples. Now a lot of us are used to praying for ourselves, but overwhelmingly, again, I did, I did an extensive uh, study on prayer uh, about five or six years ago, 20 or so books on prayer by noted experts in the craft and uh, one of the things that stood out to me that I hadn't considered quite so much until I did the study is overwhelmingly, when prayer is referred to in the Bible, it's plural. There is very little singular prayer in the Bible. You see it uh, demonstrated in a lot of places, even the model prayer, give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Plural, plural, plural. Paul's prayers. Plural, 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 plural. There's me and God, and there's a whole lot more we and God when it comes to prayer. There's prayer power when we pray together. And so, Jesus begins moving this uh, with a strong statement uh, beginning in verse 6. And here is what he says. He's He's talking to his Father in heaven. I have manifested your name to the people whom you've given me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now, they, have every, have, they know that everything that you have given me is from you. And I have given them the words that you gave me. And they received them. And have come to know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am praying for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those whom you have given me. For they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I I am glorified in them. I'm no longer in the world, but they're in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be one, even as we are one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me. I have guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the son of destruction, that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they're not of this world, just as I'm not of this world. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They're not of the world, just as I'm not of the world. Sanctify them in truth. Your word, your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake, I consecrate myself that they also may be sanctified in truth. Jesus is praying for this group of disciples. And so the best way for us to apply that is to pray for our church. To pray for this gathering of people. Now some of you, you're part of other churches. You're in from out of town. You can pray for our church. Or you may, in this prayer time coming up, pray for your church. But here's what I'd like for you to do. Now look at this building. We have all kinds of space around us. 
around the edge of the building, down front, in the aisles. Uh, and so here's what I need you to do as quickly as possible. Don't just gather up. Okay, here's, here's my family. Okay, I'm good. Why don't you branch out a little bit? Uh, and maybe, maybe you're together, but groups of four to six. Four to six. You're probably going to have to stand up to make this work, right? Anyway, you're probably going to have to stand up to make this work, right? Oh, oh, okay, well. Um, you're also frightened by this right now. You don't know what to do. And move, you know, if you see some, four to six, so if you see one person or a couple of people kind of off by themselves, maybe break up your group, move, but move around the building, find your group of four to six, make a new friend, gather around, talk about it right now, and then I'll call you back together to give you a prayer prompt. Y'all are doing so good. Proud of you. Yeah, just move toward a group of people. And you guys uh, include people. Four to six, they're about. You're doing fantastic. Wherever you want to be in the building, take a moment, introduce yourself, meet somebody. Fantastic. You get your group, you need to see some people flying solo, mix it up. All right. Here we go. You ready? Now, here's what Jesus says. You get a couple of volunteers together. And th in this time, Jesus hits this two different times in, in this prayer. Pray for, pray for unity. Pray for fellowship. Pray for love for one another in our church, and in this church family. And that's not uniformity like, okay, now we all think the same, dress the same, like all the same stuff, because our unity is all wrapped around Jesus. So how about that? Just pray that, uh, God, we pray for our church, that we would just be one, we'd be in this together, that you'd unite us around the cross of Christ. There's that kind of praying. And in your group, just, there may be two or three of you say, okay, I'll volunteer to pray for that, or all of you can pray. It's not going to take very long to, to pray this, but a, a, as we do it, it will take about four minutes. And again, when you run out of things to pray, a little silence there is okay, and then kick in again. And maybe you start praying, praying for things going on today at church. I ought to pray for the people in Bible study right now. I pray for a need for children, preschool uh, leadership uh, for this church here on Wednesday night and Sunday. I pray, I pray that you know, our, our, our teenagers just be a lighthouse on, on their campuses. You know? But from here, as God prompts you, then pray about those things for our church. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the prayers of your people being lifted up. In Jesus' name, amen. Kind of hang into where you are for just a second. Hey, by the way, I love to hear you folks sing together. Listening to, to this chorus praying together just now was, was kind of an overwhelming experience for me. And uh, thank you for that gift. Uh, amazing. Here, uh, I'm going to shuffle the deck right quick. Then I get into groups of three. Shrink it down just a little bit. Groups of three. And we'll spend a couple of minutes here, but, but how about this? Here's what we're going to pray in our groups of three or so. Pray for spiritual protection. Recognize what Jesus said in this passage. Jesus said, they're in the world, but they're not of the world. Well, that's, that's our prayer. Now, we've been talking about the world is broken. Now, I've been delivered from that broken world by Jesus Christ, however, I still spend my days are surrounded by a lot of broken. And in that broken, sometimes broken will fall on you even as a believer because the broken world's all around us. So here's what I want you to do. Pray for spiritual protection. Pray for, pray for our church overcoming temptation, Satan's attacks. Pray that, 
Pray for, you know, the beginning of the school year, pray for our students who are going to be exposed to so many things. Pray for God's, God, the covering of the Spirit over them. Pray for, pray for our family in, in spiritual warfare. And we'll give you a couple of minutes for this. Let's begin. Father God, as we continue in prayer, I pray that you would lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one, because you are the glorious one. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want you to turn, find one other person. Again, don't, don't be freaked out by it. Find one per just two of you now. Find one other person. Feel free to move around a little bit. Don't feel self-conscious. But this time, we're praying that in this world, this broken world, that we would be salt and light, lighthouses in the darkness, okay? So let's pray for that. Again, just a minute or two. Let's be, let's be a light in the darkness in this dark world. Father, may our light shine in the darkness because we know the darkness cannot overcome the light that is Jesus Christ in His name. Amen. All right. You may start moving in the gentle direction of where you started out, not to become too comfortable in that spot. One of the things Jesus has just prayed for His disciples is that they would be a joy-filled people. Now, that's not all happy-slappy. That's not what He's talking about when He talks about joy. He is talking about joy that can overcome any obstacle, joy that you are not going to be wrecked by any struggle. It's a peace, a calm, and assurance, and fullness because of Jesus Christ, our Savior. His victory is our victory, and the joy that is His becomes our joy. Why don't you stand up, because we're going to sing a couple of joy-filled songs. Amen. You had to be standing up. Okay, be seated. Thank you for, thank you for singing with your heart. Uh, I love this last section. Jesus expresses this uh, with such power. This is beginning in verse 20 of chapter 17. At verse 20 is, um, is a world shaker. I do, is he's praying. I do not ask only for these only but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, and they also be, may be in us, so that the world may believe, that word shows up over and over again, may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them and you in me that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and love them even as you love me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am. Oh man, where's he? He's heading to, he, he's going to be in heaven. With me where I am to see my glory that you've given me because you love me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you. And these know that you've sent me. I have made known to them your name, and I will continue to make it known. That the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. Did you get verse 20? There's a sentence there that extends over the centuries of time. Jesus says, I'm praying for these guys, but I'm also praying for everybody they're going to tell about me that's going to come to believe. I'm praying for those people who are going to tell some more people, who are going to tell some more people, who are going to tell some more people, who one of these days, it gets around to Chad Self who, in Victoria, Texas, who gives his life to Jesus. And then Chad goes, he starts telling people about Jesus. And it gets down to us. So here's, here's the blessing of this verse 20. You are on Jesus' prayer list. How about that? You had a good amen to that? You're on Jesus' prayer list. Jesus, in John 17, prays not only for the people that are in the room when he was saying this, but he prays for everyone who's going to believe because of them, and that gets all the way to us. Jesus is praying for you. Now, look what Jesus prays, that we'd be united as the people of God. 
kingdom citizens, citizens in this world, and how united does he want us to be as his followers? As united as the son is with the father. To perfection. He wants us to be that united. All those who come to believe the testimony, the faithful gospel sharing of those who've gone out, apostles, generations of believers, and right down to us. Now look at what Jesus prays. That we'd be united as the people of God, knowing that the world is with us. And this is where we get into, we're going to be shoulder to shoulder. We're going to be back to back. We're going to be heart to heart, going through life together. Verse 23, that, the, that we will, because he's praying for them and all of us through, through them, that we will love one another. So here's the challenge. Jesus says that they'll do those one another's really well. That they will take care of one another. Jesus knows that this world is a hard broken place. So he prays for them and for us. That we would always remember this world is not the end of the story. There's a heaven, glorious heaven. With a loving savior waiting for us out there one day. Where we'll be with him with all the perfection. All the, all the rewards. The glory of heaven. And he will be with us always. Through the broken part of now. And in the mission to make Jesus known, and then one day in glory with him forever. Now, we're going to do this quickly. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to pray for one another. Uh, in just a moment, I'm going to give you instructions before you move. In just a moment, we're going to, we're going to get you to move again. In a groups four to six, however you can group up quickly. But we're going to pray for one another. And what I'd like for you to do is just go around your your group, your circle, and pray. Now, this is not the time to say, yeah, I have a prayer request, and let me give you some background. In 1967, it's not the time for that prayer request. This is the time to say, you know, pray, pray for my mom. She has cancer. This is the time to say, pray, pray for my kids. Just, you know, I dropped them off at college yesterday, and uh, I just... They're not, they're not quite under my watchful eye today, and uh, I, I need, uh, I just want God's covering. Just a quick prayer request, quickly as you can, just one or two things, uh, somebody you know who's sick, things that you need in your life and your family. You know, job stuff just really scramble for me right now, and just pray God to give me not just a job, but the right job, and a job where I can, I can provide well, and and so here's what we're going to do. We're going to divide into those groups, and then we'll stay in those groups for the last thing. But we're going to pray. Just a request or two. Maybe just two people in your group to pray out loud covering those things. But when you're offering the prayer request, just remember you're offering to the Lord too. Not just for the people in your circle. Groups four to six, ready, go. Go.